Hello, I am Kimmy with On William Street, and we are here to help you become a more confident quilter, from the piecing to the quilting and everything in between. So this week, we are going to do a fun new free motion quilting motif. Don't forget, everything that we talk about in today's video, you can also find in a blog post on our website. So we'll go ahead and make sure that that is linked below. So you can see diagrams of the motifs and step-by-step and -step on how to quilt those out as well. And then also while you're there, don't forget to check out our shop where we have lots of fun modern quilting patterns, perfect for your next project. So this week, the motif that we're gonna do is a loopy uh, variation on the loopy design. So like you've probably seen a lot of the times You've got, you know, an all over loopy pattern on the quilt and they're a lot of fun and perfect for like the beginner quilter. This is one that um, we're gonna adjust just a little bit and we're gonna quilt it more in rows as opposed to all over. So we'll go ahead and go over um, how to draw that out and sketch that out and then we will stitch it out as well. Before we go to the sewing machine, whenever I'm learning a new free motion quilting motif, I always like to sketch it out first. And that's just really going to help you kind of figure out exactly how the motif works, exactly, you know, the direction you're gonna stitch, how you're gonna move around the piece, and get you a lot more comfortable before you immediately go to the sewing machine. Paper and pen are a lot cheaper and a lot easier to kind of practice on and get the feel for it um, than fabric and thread is. So I always like to start there. So the motif, like I said today, it's really a variation on the loop and it's a lot of fun and a lot and really easy to do. And it's kind of, it's an all over design, but it's worked in rows. So if you're quilting on your domestic machine, it's really easy to kind of roll it up, quilt one row, move it over, quilt another row. So it makes moving it around a little bit easier than sometimes an all over design where you're going in all sorts of different directions. So this design, we're going to go ahead and we're gonna come up and we're just gonna loop one, two loops, and then the next one, we're just gonna loop the other direction. And you notice that there are big gaps here, and that's totally okay, because what we're gonna do with the next row is we're going to fill in those gaps. And doing designs like this, where they kind of go back and forth on the rows, so that you're filling in those gaps, um, kind of interlocks them and makes it look more all over and less like it is stitched in rows. So it's kind of a great way to hide the fact that you're just stitching one row, moving it over, stitching one row. So you can see the next one, you're gonna come up and we're gonna go the same direction here, fill in this space and then come down, stitch our two loops here, come up, stitch. So you can make these loops, mine are very long. Um, also with this, don't forget to come back up here on the top of your quilt and fill in, you don't want that gap up there to fill in that section. You could also, if you wanted to, you could definitely make them more circular. Um, or you could really, here we're going to turn the page. Or if you wanted to, you could really do them really long and skinny. So there's some variation there on how you want to play out the shape of those loops. Just whatever you like, whatever you're comfortable with. And then we can come back in here and fill in. Just make sure that you're leaving enough space to come in and do the next set. So you can, like I said, you can really kind of vary how the design looks by changing the shape of those loops. You could also, you know, change the number of loops. One, two, you can do three. You want a little bit more going on there. But it's all gonna be the same motion up, down, up just back and forth, alternating all the way across the quilt. And it gives a really fun all over texture. All right, so to stitch this design for practice sandwiches, I like to just grab some scrap fabric. I prefer um, solids because then I can see my stitching better. If you're quilting on a print, a lot of times your stitching is gonna get lost and you're not gonna really be able to see what you've done, where you can improve. Another trick I have is if you've been sewing along with us all year, if you already have some practice sandwiches, you can take a piece of fabric and just stick it on top of an old sandwich. You can do this a few times, um, and that way you're saving fabric, you're not using as much batting, and still get that practice. I'm also going to be stitching with white thread on this purple fabric, and that's so that you can see it. If you're new to free motion quilting, you don't want your stitching to stand out as much because you're not as comfortable with your stitches. A um, thread that blends 
is going to hide a lot of mistakes. So it's a great way to really be able to practice but feel confident in, in the final product and still being able to quilt on a quilt that you're going to actually use. So if you are practicing, you know, definitely go ahead and grab a thread that's going to stand out. It's going to do the same thing as the um, solid fabric and it's just going to help you see what you need to work on the most. So before I get started, I'm going to pull up my bottom thread. And I always like to start with my bottom thread on top. Then you can hang on to it and you're going to avoid any of those bird nests or rats ne um, knots in the back from when the, you know, the thread can kind of get sucked in. So we're going to do our loop. And like I said, we're gonna work in rows. So I'm actually gonna work this way and move it through the machine. To me, that's easier because if I have bulk of the, the quilt, I can roll that up here in the, in the throat and here on the outside and work all the way through that direction as opposed to trying to work this way and constantly shoving more material into the throat of the machine. So I'm going to start and just take a few stitches And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this thread that's underneath. Sometimes a pin is helpful. And I'm just going to pull it and move it out of the way. And I do have my free motion quilting foot on. Don't forget, you need to make sure you've got your free motion quilting on. And if you can drop your feed dogs, you know, go ahead and drop your feed dogs or cover them up. It will usually make things a lot easier. So after I've taken a few stitches, I've got my threads underneath and out of the way. I'm just going to go ahead and make my first loop. At the bottom of my first loop, again, with this design, we're going to do two loops in a row. Now when I get to here, I'm going to swap and go the other direction. Things I'm working on here, things I'm kind of focusing on is even spacing and trying to keep the loops relatively the same size. They don't have to be perfect, but roughly the same size and shape. That's going to make coming in and fitting in the next row a lot easier. And then from here, again, just go to two more on the bottom. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and turn it around so I can see what I'm doing. I really prefer to push mine away. So if you don't care, you don't really have a preference, you don't have to turn it around, but I'm going to just because then I can work back that direction. So now I'm going to go the opposite way. So I'm going to fill this in with one loop since that's all that I fit here and then come down here and do my two loops. So you're just mirroring what is there. With this design, when you need to stop and reposition your hands, I've kind of found that this part where you cross over your line is really probably one of the best places to stop. And this is where we talked about making sure we had enough space. So I need to space mine out a little bit farther. You can see it gets kind of skinny in here. So I need to just space them out a little bit farther. again and again just fill back in and keep working all the way across the top.
And then we have our fun loopy rows. So remember, this is a great one to do an all over design. It's quick and easy. So if you have a quilt that you need to get finished up fast and get finished up now, this is a fun all over design that you can do. And you can just roll up the sides and work in rows around your um, domestic sewing machine. So it makes it easy to complete on a, on a domestic sewing machine. You don't have to worry about having a long arm, but it's fun and easy to do. So if you have any questions, don't forget all the details and diagrams and stuff are in the blog post. So you can find the link to that in the description below the video. You can also check out our shop, which is full of fun, modern quilting projects. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. You can also find us on Instagram and Facebook, and we'll see you next time.